In this lesson, we will learn about multiplication. One day, Golu Panda found an injured bird outside his house. Golu bandaged her wounds and took very good care of her. The bird recovered and gave some apple seeds to Golu before leaving. Golu planted two seeds each in five pots. Can you tell how many seeds did Golu plant? In all, Golu planted seeds in five pots. And how many seeds did he plant in each pot? Two seeds. Let's find out the total number of seeds by adding these seeds. Add two to two. Again add two. Again add two. And finally, one more. How many seeds we get? Ten seeds. Each pot has two seeds. And there are five such pots. We can write it as five times two. Or we can also write it as five multiplied with two. The next day, Golu saw that big trees had grown from those seeds. When Golu saw the trees after a few days, he was unable to believe his eyes. Golden apples were growing on those trees. Golu was very happy to see this. Babban wanted to know the secret behind Golu becoming so rich suddenly. Golu narrated the entire story. The next day, Babban injured the bird by laying a trap. Then he took care of the bird just like Golu and the bird recovered. Before leaving, the bird gave some seeds to Babban too. Babban planted five seeds each in three pots. Can you tell how many seeds did Babban plant in total? Five plus five and plus five. What numbers do we get? Yes, Babban planted 15 seeds in total. Now, how can we write it in a different form? 3 times 5 or 3 multiplied with 5. Children, if Babban had planted 3 seeds each in 5 pots, then can you write this by using multiplication? Yes, we can write it as 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. And finally, 1 more 3 equals to 15. Or 5 multiplied by 3. Or 5 multiplied with 3. We can write it like this. After planting the seeds, Babban was dreaming of golden apples at night. Suddenly, he heard a blast. When Babban went out to check, all his pots had broken. Once again, Babban became victim of greed. Children, in this lesson, we learnt how to multiply by adding repeatedly. In the next two lessons, we will see some more of its interesting examples. Children, in the last lesson, we learned how to multiply by repeated addition. In this lesson, we will see some of its interesting examples. Golu Panda's banana orchards reaped a good harvest this season. 
he thought that he can earn a lot of money by selling these bananas in the market. At the same time, Chanda Squirrel too had set up her flower stall. Golu had arranged six groups of 12 bananas each in this way. Children, can you write the number of bananas Golu had in the form of multiplication? 12 added to 12, again add 12, again add 12, again add 12 and finally add one more 12. How much is that? 72. Can you write this in another way? 6 times 12 or 6 multiplied with 12. At the same time, Chanda was selling 5 bunches of 7 flowers each. Children, can you tell the total number of flowers Chanda was selling? 5 times 7 or 5 multiplied with 7. We can write it like this. Now, how will we do this by using the method of addition? 7 added to 7. Again add 7. Again add 7. And finally, add one more 7. So, what is the total number of flowers? 35 flowers. The day turned into evening, but Golu couldn't sell a single banana. On the other hand, Chanda was happily going home as she sold all her flowers. Appu Elephant noticed the sad Golu and bought 12 bananas from him. Next day, there was a long queue at Appu's sweet shop. Golu was shocked to see this crowd. Just then, Appu came to his cart and gave Golu a sweet box and thanked him. Golu was confused. Then Appu told him that he had made a sweet from the 12 bananas that he bought from Golu. And everyone liked the sweet a lot. And now there are so many people visiting his shop today. Appu used two bananas for each sweet box and he made five such boxes. Can you complete this table and tell how many bananas did Appu use in total? This is absolutely correct answer. Appu used five multiplied by two, that is ten bananas. So, Appu bought all the bananas from Golu that day. Golu went home very, very happy. Children, in this lesson, we saw an interesting example of multiplication with repeated addition. In this lesson, we will look at some interesting concepts related to multiplication by repeated addition. Do you remember the Raju's and Bablu's magical glasses? Today, once again, they wore their glasses and moved out to have some fun. Come, let's see what they see through their glasses. First, Raju and Bablu have arrived at Gaggu Rhino's toy shop. There is a box of balls there. In the box, the balls are placed in four vertical and five horizontal compartments. Raju wore his glasses and looked at the box. He saw a multiplication like this. 
Now Bablu wore his glasses and looked at the box. He saw a multiplication like this. Is this possible? Is the multiplication seen through Bablu's and Raju's glasses the same? Come, let's look at Raju's multiplication. Here Raju saw five horizontal compartments and four balls in each compartment. 4 multiplied by 5. Can you write this in another way? 4 times 5. Now, how will we write it in addition form? By adding 5 4 times like this. So, what is the total number of balls? 20. Come. Now let's look at Bablu's multiplication. Here Bablu saw four big compartments and five balls in each compartment. Five multiplied by four. Now how can we write this? Five times four. And how to write in addition form? Adding 4 5 times like this. So how many balls do you get? This is also 20. The multiplication seen through both Raju and Bablu's glasses were exactly the same. Children, isn't it interesting? We can write any multiplication in two ways like this and its answer will always be the same. Bablu and Raju were very excited seeing the multiplication magic of their glasses. They didn't realize that they had reached the park. In the park, five birds were sitting on a branch of a tree. This time, Bablu looked at the tree through his glasses first. He saw this multiplication. Suddenly the birds flew and now there was one bird on five separate branches. Raju wore his glasses and looked at the tree. He saw this multiplication. Did Raju see the same number of birds as Bablu? Let's look at Bablu's multiplication first. 5 multiplied by 1. How can we write this using addition? Yes, we can add 1 5 times. So how many birds in total? 5. Now let's look at Raju's multiplication. 1 multiplied by 5 can we write it using addition? No. Why so? Because 1 multiplied by 5 is 1 times 5, which gives you 5. Raju saw as many birds as Bablu. Both of them saw 5 birds. Now, as they walked around, Raju and Bablu reached Golu Panda's dairy. There they saw bottles placed in a tray like this. The tray had five vertical slots and five horizontal slots. This time, both Raju and Bablu wore their glasses together and looked at the tray. But what is this? They saw the same multiplication through their glasses. Both were shocked. How is it possible? What will happen if we write the multiplication of vertical slots? Five vertical slots and five bottles in each slot. That means five times five or 5 
multiplied by 5. And if we write the multiplication of horizontal slots, 5 horizontal slots and 5 bottles in each slot. Once again the same. 5 times 5 or 5 multiplied by 5. Therefore, both Raju and Bablu's glasses are absolutely fine and the multiplication shown by them were also same. Can you now find the solution to this multiplication? Absolutely right! There were a total of 25 bottles. Raju and Bablu went around the village happily dancing away. Children, in this lesson, we looked at some interesting concepts related to multiplication by repeated addition. Hello children, in this lesson, we will learn the tables of 2, 3, 4. One day, Bunny Rabbit, Kittu Kangaru and Babban Monkey got lost in the jungle. They reached near a swamp while looking for their way. They saw some stones like this in the swamp. First, Bunny tried to cross the swamp. He jumped two steps in one jump and reached the second stone. Then he took another jump and reached which stone? On the fourth stone. In the third jump, Bunny will reach on which stone two steps ahead? On sixth stone. This way, jump after jump, Bunny moved two steps ahead in every jump and in the end crossed over to the other side of the swamp from the twentieth stone. Children, do you find something unique in Bunny's jumps? Two is being added to every jump of Bunny. And what did we learn in the previous lesson? Repeated addition can also be written in the form of multiplication. Like this, another unique thing has been made. Can you guess what it is? It becomes the table of two. Seeing Bunny, now Kittu Kangaru has also gathered courage. Kittu can take three steps in one jump. First, he took one jump and reached the third stone. Now, he took another jump, reached three steps ahead and further reached which step? On the sixth stone. Now, Kittu will reach which stone after taking the third jump? On the ninth stone. Kittu reached the 21st stone in his 7th jump, got down from there and crossed the swamp easily. Children, can you tell that if Kittu could take the 8th, 9th and 10th jump, which stone would he reach? On 24th, 27th and 30th stone. And children, now if we write it in the form of multiplication, then what will we get? Absolutely right! The table of three! Now Kittu and Bunny had crossed the swamp. But Babban was still on the other side of the swamp. Suddenly all the stones on the swamp got buried inside the swamp. Just then, Babban's eye ventured above the swamp. Some creepers were hanging there. Babban thought 
that he could cross the swamp by hanging on the creepers. Babban can cross four creepers in one jump. He took the first jump and hung to the fourth creeper. Now can you make the table of four by adding four to each of Babban's jump? Oh wow! Table of four is ready! And like this, by jumping from one creeper to another, Babban also crossed the swamp. Bunny, Kittu and Babban searched for a way and came out of the jungle. Children, in this lesson, we learned the tables of two, three and four. Mouth Duck Uncle is teaching Chanda to make a unique boat and along with it teaching the tables of 5, 6 and 10. Come, let us also learn these tables with Chanda. Uncle has kept some wood and ropes here. Chanda, my child, come let's make a unique boat. We will first learn the table of five while making the boat and therefore we will keep five woods standing like this. Chanda placed five wood pieces on the ground like this. Now we will place one wood horizontally like this and we will tie a rope at the joints where the horizontal piece cuts the vertical pieces. This is 1 multiplied with 5. Children, can you count the total joints and tell how many these are? 5. This is very easy. Just keep adding the horizontal words and keep counting the total joints. Your boat and table both will keep building. Chanda started dancing happily. Chanda thanked uncle and went with her unique boat to sail in the river. Chanda was humming the table of five while sailing in her boat. Five ones are five, five twos are ten. 5 threes are 15, 5 fours are 20, 5 fives are 25, 5 sixes are 30, 5 sevens are 35, 5 eights are 40, 5 nines are 45, 5 tens are 50. Appu saw her sailing in her boat on the river. He asked Chanda to teach him to make the boat and the table of 10. Children, to teach Appu the table of ten, how many sticks should Chanda use? Ten. Now what should we do to start building the boat and the table of ten? We have to place one wood horizontally. Now, how much is one multiplied with ten? Ten. What should we do next? We'll add one more wood piece. Now, 2 multiplied with 10 is 20. Chanda added words just like us and built the table of 10 like this. And Appu's boat is ready. Now Chanda and Appu both sailed their boats on the river and started for their homes humming the table of ten. Come children, let's repeat the table of ten with them. Ten ones are ten, ten twos are twenty, ten threes are thirty, ten fours are forty, 10 fives are 50, 
टेन सिक्स जा सिक्सटी टेन सेवन जा सेवेंटी टेन एट जा एट्टी टेन नाइन जा नाइन्टी टेन टेन जा हंड्रेड चिल्ड्रन कैन यू बिल्ड द टेबल ऑफ सिक्स बाय यूजिंग द मेथड टॉट बाय अंकल मेक इट इन योर नोटबुक बाय ड्राइंग लाइंस Oh wow the table of 6 is ready now you can hum the table of 6 in a unique tune with your friends exactly like chanda children in this lesson we learned the table of 5 6 and 10 in the next lesson we will learn some unique uses of tables Hello children let's learn to use the tables One day a lot of fruits had grown in Chanda's garden She thought why not take four bananas each for her friends Appu Golu and Babban Children can you tell how many bananas should Chanda take Appu, Golu, and Babban are how many friends in total? Three. Now, how many bananas are to be taken for each friend? Four. Chanda has to take four bananas each for three friends. We can write it like this: three times four bananas. Now how will we write it in the form of multiplication? 3 multiplied by 4. Children, can you write its answer by using the table of 4? Absolutely right. Chanda will have to take 12 bananas for her three friends. Chanda filled 12 bananas in a basket and she started walking in her garden. Chanda collected a lot of mangoes from her mango tree and tied them in bunches of 6 mangoes each. Chanda now has 8 such bunches. Can you tell how many mangoes has Chanda collected in total? Chanda has got 8 bunches. and every bunch has 6 mangoes in it how will we write this 8 times 6 now how will we write it as multiplication 8 multiplied by 6 now using the table of 6 they become 48 chanda collected a total of 48 mangoes now chanda had to pick coconuts from a coconut tree but the tree was very high therefore she called babban for help babban told chanda that he would take 5 rupees for picking each coconut chanda had to get a total of 7 coconuts picked now chanda is thinking how much money will she have to pay to babban children you have solved this correctly chanda will have to give 35 rupees to babban chanda collected the coconuts and gave money to babban now both of them went to rest under a tree children in this lesson we learned to use tables children in this lesson we will learn about the factors by multiplication one day the king of the jungle gave 10 hens each 
to Golu, Chanda and Appu and asked them to build a home for them. But he kept a condition. The condition was that the three of them would have to build different types of houses for the hens and in a manner that in every row of their house the number of hens remains the same. They will get 10 gold coins for building the houses correctly. Next day, the king came out to inspect the houses built by them. First, he went to see the house built by Golu. Golu had built a long house like this. In every row of the house built by Golu, there was one hen and there were 10 such rows. Was the house built by Golu correct as per the conditions stated by the king? Was he able to make space for all the hens in that house? In the house built by Golu, there were 10 rows and each row had one hen. This way, every row had an equal number of hens. Now, was the total number of hens in Golu's house 10? How will we write it in the form of multiplication? 10 multiplied with 1. 10 multiplied with 1 is 10. Golu had built the house perfectly. The king gave 10 gold coins as the prize. Now the king arrived to see the house built by Chanda. Chanda had made use of five rows to build the house like this for hens. And each row had two hens in them. Was the house built by Chanda correct? Five rows and two hens in each row. Is the number of hens in each row equal? Yes! Does the number of hens in the house equal to 10? 5 multiplied with 2 make 10. Oh wow! Chanda has also built the house perfectly. The king gave 10 gold coins to Chanda too. Finally, the king arrived to see the house built by Appu. Appu had made a two row house. He has placed five hands in each row. Did Appu also get 10 gold coins as a prize from the king? Yes, you have given the right answer. Appu made the house perfectly and got the prize from the king. Children, as per the conditions stated by the king, can you build the house for hands in any other way? Absolutely right! We can build the house for the hands by placing 10 hands in one row as well. Children, if you look closely, then you will find that here we have written 10 as 4 different forms of multiplication. So, this is how we can write any number as a multiplication of two numbers. The two numbers that form part of the multiplication are known as factors. Here, 1, 2, 5 and 10 are factors of 10. Children, in this lesson, we learned about factors of multiplication. In the next two lessons, we will see some interesting examples of the same. Today, we will learn more about factors of multiplication. People from Champapur are making plans to go on a picnic. They have to arrange for some buses 
for the picnic. The seating should be such that the number of people sitting in every row is equal. The first bus operators sent a bus in which only one person can sit in a row. And there are six such rows. Can people sit in a bus like this? To find the answer to this question, we will need to find the factors of six. Do you want to learn an easy method to find factors? It is very simple. We need to identify the number tables in which the number six appears. Come, let's start with the table of one. Does number six appear in the table of one? Yes. 6 multiplied by 1 is 6. Therefore, 6 people can sit in this bus in 6 rows with 1 person sitting in each row. So, children, can you find out more such buses where 6 people can sit? But remember that the number of people in each row should be equal. Let's find all the factors of 6 and solve this puzzle. Does the number 6 appear in the table of 2? Yes, 3 multiplied by 2 is 6. Therefore, 2 is the factor of 6. So, if 2 people sit in each of 3 rows, how many people would be able to sit? 6. Now, let's look at the table of 3. Does the number 6 appear in the table of 3? 2 multiplied by 3 is 6. Therefore, 3 is the factor of 6. So, if 3 people sit in each of 2 rows, how many people in total would be sitting on the bus? 6. Now, let's check the table of 4. Does the number 6 appear in table of 4? No, therefore, 4 is not the factor of number 6. In other words, if in a bus, 4 people sit in each row, then 6 people will be able to sit in 2 rows. But the number of people in each row will not be equal. Similarly, if we look at the table of 5, then we will find that 5 is also not a factor of number 6. So, a bus in which 5 people sit in each row will not be of any use to the villagers. Now, let's look at the table of 6. Does the number 6 appear in the table of 6? Yes! 1 multiplied with 6 is 6. Therefore, 6 is also the factor of number 6. So, one line and 6 people in each line is a good option. Today, we saw that 1, 2, 3 and 6 are the factors of the number 6. And 4 and 5 are not factors of 6. So, you see, by finding all the factors of 6, we help the villagers. Children, we can find the factors of any number by using the multiplication table. Now, why don't you try to play this game of finding factors of number 8 with your friends? So, children, in this lesson, we learned a unique method of finding factors of any number. In the next chapter, we will learn different ways to use these factors. Children, in this lesson, we will learn the use of factors by multiplication. You all know Bablu is very naughty. One day, while roaming around, 
he went far into the forest and reached the other village. There he saw a big house. Bablu thought that he will rest there for a while and went inside the house. As he walked in, he saw three boxes on the table and in each box there were ten apples. Can you tell how many apples were there in total? How will we write this by using multiplication? 3 multiplied by 10. Now, using the multiplication of 3, how many are these? 30. Bablu was very hungry. Of the 3 boxes, one of the box had delicious red apples. Bablu ate a few apples from that box. Now, Bablu went to a room. It was a huge room with two cupboards. Each cupboard had five shelves. Can you find out how many shelves were there in total? How will we write this by using multiplication? Two multiplied with five. How much is it? Ten. Bablu took a few toys from one of those cupboards and started playing with them. Now, Bablu again started to feel hungry. In the room, he saw a box of sweets that looked like this. The box contained a total of 35 laddus. There were 7 vertical slots in the box. Can you tell how many laddus were there in each vertical slot? This question can be written in multiplication form like this. Now, can you make use of the method of finding factors learned in the last lesson and find the answer to this puzzle? You just have to find out when does 35 appear in the table of 7. So, what multiplied with 7 is 35? 5 multiplied with 7. Each slot of the box had 5 laddus. Bablu ate a lot of laddus and started feeling sleepy. Bablu slept on the bed. Suddenly, Bablu heard some voices. When Bablu tried to see in his half-asleep state, everything looked hazy to him. And he could only see 18 buttons. If every person present there had six buttons each on their shirt, then can you tell how many people were standing there? Yes, you have solved it correctly. Three people were standing in front of Bablu. Actually, Bablu had reached Bubu Bear's house. Bubu and his family were surprised to see him there. The moment Bablu saw Bubu, he ran away and did not return back again. Children, in this chapter, we learned some interesting uses of factors. Children, in this lesson, we will learn how to use multiplication. There was a beautiful dense forest outside Champapur. All the animals lived there in perfect harmony. One day, some wolves came there to live. They started torturing all the animals, especially the tiny ants. The ants were irritated by the terror of the wolf and one day they warned the wolves to stay away. The wolf started laughing at them. The next day, when the wolf came to trouble the ants, he could not see even a single ant there. The wolf waited for long and fell asleep under a tree. 
Actually, this was a well thought out plan by the ants. They formed three groups and each group had 32 ants. All the ants were hiding behind the tree. Can you tell how many ants were there in all? How do we write it in the form of multiplication? 3 times 32 is... But we do not know the multiplication table of 32. What we will get if we split 32? 30 and 2. We will write in this way. What is the number we have to multiply 32 with? 3. We will write 3 here like this. Now we will multiply the first 2 by 3. 3 times 2 is 6. We will write this answer here. Now, we will multiply 30 by 3. 3 times 30 is 90. We write this answer here. Now, it's very easy. On adding 6 and 90, we get 96. This way, we got our answer 3 times 32 is 96, okay? There were total of 96 ants. When the wolf fell asleep, the ants attacked him the whole night. Every group bit him severely. The wolf ran away from there in pain. But he told the ants that he would bring three more of his friends the next day. The ants got scared, but they decided to fight till the end with the wolves. Now they are thinking, if 96 ants were needed for one wolf, how many ants would they need to attack four wolves? Can you help the ants by solving this multiplication question? Let's do it together. How do we split 96? 90 and 6. What shall we do now? We will first multiply 6 of 96 by 4. 4 times 6 is... 24. We will write this answer here. Now we will multiply 90 by 4. 4 times 90. How do we find it? Just by placing a 0 next to the answer of 4 times 9, which is 36. We will get the answer 360. We will write this answer here. Now it is very easy. If we add 24 to 360, what do we get? 384. Doing this, we got the answer to our question 4 times 96, which is 384. A total of 384 rands will be required. The next day, the wolf came there with three of his friends. This time, the wolves looked behind the tree, but they could not see the ants there. Waiting for the ants, the wolves fell asleep under the tree. This time, the 384 ants were hiding on top of the tree. As soon as the wolves fell asleep, they attacked them fiercely and severely wounded the wolves by biting them. 
The wolves fled from there with their tail between their legs and never returned back. Children, in this lesson, we learnt a method of multiplication. We will see some interesting examples of this in the next lesson. In the last lesson, we learned the process of multiplication. In this lesson, we will see some interesting examples on this. Everyone has gone to the fair. The fair has a variety of entertainment. There is a huge ferris wheel in the fair. This ferris wheel can seat 22 people at a time. The ferris wheel operates 12 times a day. Raju and Bablu are looking at this ferris wheel. Raju asked Bablu, How many people can sit in this ferris wheel? In a day. Children, can you find the answer to Raju's question? At a time, 22 people can sit in it. And the ferris wheel operates 12 times a day. How do we write this in the form of multiplication? 12 times 22. But we have only learned to multiply a two digit number with a single digit number. How do we calculate this now? Come, let us learn to multiply two two digit numbers how can we split 12 10 and 2 we will write it this way and how can we now split 22 20 and 2 we will write it this way now we first multiply the 2 of 12 by 20 of 22. 20 times 2 is 40. We will write this answer here. Now, we multiply 10 by 20. 20 times 10 is 200. We will write this answer here. Now, we multiply 2 of 22 by 2 of 12. That's 2 times 2 is 4. Finally, multiply 2 of 22 by 10 of 12. What would we get? 20. Now it's very easy. Adding 200, 40, 20 and 4 is our answer 264. Following this method, we got 12 times 22 is 264. Got it. A total of 264 people can sit in the Ferris wheel in a day. While going around the fair, Raju and Bablu stopped at the game stall, which had the balloon bursting game. Bablu asked Raju, why not buy themselves and for their friends tickets to this game? Bablu and Raju counted the number of people. Including both of them, there are 17 people. The cost of one ticket for the balloon bus game is rupees 15. Raju and Bablu are unable to calculate how much money they will have to pay to buy the required number of tickets. Come children, let us help Bablu and Raju once again. This time, let's learn to perform this multiplication using a different process. First, we will write multiplication this way. Now, we will multiply 5 of 15 by 7 of 17. Did you get it? 35.
can we write both the digits of 35 as a single digit number? No. So, what shall we do now? We will use carry over to write 3 of 35 as a carryover and write the 5 in units place like this. Now, we multiply 1 of 17 by 5 of 15. Got it? 5. But we also have 3 of the previous carryover. So, what shall we do now? We will add 3 and 5 to find the answer. Done. 8. We will write it like this. Now we will cancel the carried over 3 so that we don't make a mistake of counting them again. Now we will multiply the 1 of 15 by the digits of 17 from right to left. We will write it in the second row. Before starting the multiplication process, we write a zero like this in the unit space. First, we multiply one by seven. Is it done? Seven. We will write it like this. Now, finally, one is multiplied by 1. That's 1. We will write it like this. Now it's very easy. Simply add 170 to 85. What do we get? 255. Doing this, we get our answer 17 15s are 255. Raju and Bablu will have to pay a total of 255 rupees. Raju and Bablu and their friends had a lot of fun at the fair. Children, in this lesson we have seen some interesting examples on the process of multiplication. In the next video, we will see some common mistakes we make in the process of multiplication. children in the previous lesson we saw some interesting examples on the process of multiplication in this lesson we will cover some common mistakes related to multiplication today is Sher Khan's birthday he has invited everyone for his party Sher Khan placed the chairs for the rabbits very close to the cake as they were his best friends. The rabbits were to sit in groups of 32 and 20 such groups were to come. Sher Khan estimated the total number of rabbits attending his party. When all the rabbits took their seats, 32 seats were lying vacant. Now, Sher Khan is wondering why 32 of his rabbit friends didn't attend the party. Children, what do you think? Is Sher Khan right? Yes, Sher Khan is wrong. He made a mistake while multiplying. Can you tell me what was the mistake Sher Khan made? Sher Khan made a mistake while multiplying by zero. So, how do we find the right answer? Well done children, you have found the answer to this correctly. Only 640 rabbits were to arrive at the party. While calculating, Sher Khan made a mistake and he counted 32 more. Therefore, those seats were left empty. 
monkeys were also present in the party. There were 13 monkeys in total and each monkey needed 5 bananas. Let's see how the monkeys found the total number of bananas needed. Now, when they started distributing bananas, they realized they were short by 10 bananas. Can you tell where the monkeys went wrong? Yes, the monkey forgot to add the carryover 1 of 15 while multiplying. Can you find the correct answer by fixing this mistake? Yes, you have solved it absolutely correctly. All the guests had a lot of fun in the party. Hope you also enjoy learning more about multiplication. Children, in this lesson, we have seen some common mistakes related to the process of multiplication.